Коллеги, добрый вечер. Признателен вам. Good evening, distinguished colleagues. I appreciate the spirit of partnership uh, and uh, camaraderie that you demonstrate during this session. I think you all saw how Ambassador Sultanier from the Islamic Republic of Iran made a huge contribution uh, towards strengthening of uh, the uh, nuclear ban treaty by providing Dr. Serbov with the interpretation equipment. Has to be applied. Anyway, it's a pleasure that despite a late evening, and I know that uh, some of you had some concerns whether we should uh, hold a, a session on TBTO that late. You know, when we discussed uh, this option, we figured, well, this is going to be a dessert. And, uh, you know, we have uh, an extremely representative panel today in terms of knowledge and uh, experience. I got to say that this podium is not big enough to fit all the experts with colossal knowledge and understanding of this issue because we have Ambassador Berdenikov with us who was head of the Russian delegation, uh, Mr. Slivchenko who actually contributed uh, as a deputy head of the delegation during the negotiations. And once again, let me remind you that those of you who yesterday visited uh, the uh, House of Receptions of the Foreign Ministry of Russia, that was the place that also contributed to uh, the whole range of consultations and negotiations on banning nuclear tests. First, it was a treaty on banning uh, tests in free uh, environments, and then uh, this facility uh, was the venue for the consultations on the mandate uh, for the negotiations. Now, for us, for experts, at least uh, at the Senate, such venues are of extreme importance and significance because uh, this is where uh, the history was in the making. Any country actively involved in non-proliferation would have uh, similar venues, similar uh, facilities uh, that uh, housed the main negotiations uh, on uh, arms control and non-proliferation. Now, what are our plans for this particular session? I'd like to recognize first uh, the Executive Secretary of the Preparatory Commission of the CTBTO, Dr. Zerbo. I uh, mentioned to some of you that Dr. Zerbo was perhaps the first to confirm his participation in this event. In fact, uh, we talked with him last fall in Moscow, and back then he said that, look, if you guys are going to invite me, I'd be happy to come. Uh, and we thank him for this continuity. And I'm confident that uh, Dr. Zerbo is as punctual in dealing with others as he is in dealing with us. Now, Dr. Zerbo will deliver uh, a keynote speech, and uh, he will touch upon uh, the following topic. Why I'm optimistic about uh, CTBT uh, future. After that, the panelists uh, would come up with their comments. Uh, as to which measures uh, or steps uh, might be of critical importance in order to uh, make this treaty uh, effective. Uh, we're not limited uh, by time, so we're going to finish our discussion on CTBT in this room uh, at 7, and we will continue the discussion uh, over tea and coffee in the room next door. Dr. Zerbo, please. Good afternoon, and thank you, uh, Anton.
uh, for inviting me and uh, congratulations in putting such a, a remarkable uh, gathering uh, where uh, we all come to discuss freely and then see how best we can find a solution uh, to the global concerns of the, of the moment. So at your center, I think you've grown uh, with time uh, and then became better every year. So the example is that you managed to bring Foreign Minister Lavrov this morning, and that was uh, indeed excellent. So your center is now a world uh, center. I was thinking this morning when I was listening to you and to others, I said, okay, I saw CNS Russia. I said, maybe I'll have a CNS Burkina Faso. Uh, and then uh, let's, see how let's we, discuss can, it. we can discuss that. But you've asked me, uh, we're talking uh, the day before yesterday, and then you say, why don't you talk about your optimism for the future of uh, CTBT? And then I said to myself, okay, what would be my answer? But I have one straight answer to that. I'm optimist for the future of the CTBT because there is uh, no other alternative to the optimism and the opportunity that the Comprehensive Test Plan Treaty gives to any progress in non-proliferation and disarmament today. This is why I'm optimistic about the CTBT's future. That's the first thing. The second, I'm optimistic about the CTBT because my priorities have uh, become clearer with each passing year since, taking, since joining the Comprehensive Test Plan Treaty with Preparatory Commission in Vienna. And that's what keeps me focused. It keeps me focused because uh, in joining the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty, I was fortunate to meet excellent people. I think the panel here is an example. Uh, Hans Blix, a member of the group of eminent persons, is in his 90s, but he looks 40 because he's mixed with the CTBT youth group. <laughs> <laughs> Zig Heke is my, uh, we call each other our Kazakh brothers because we have a great experience from Kazakhstan and don't ask him why. Uh, Shazuka as well, uh, I mean, he's been in the negotiation for so long. But if you see Ambassador Shah, whenever I see him in the panel, I say, look, what I need to do is to lock you in the room because you are part of those who have made the CTBT so difficult to enter into force. And uh, he, he has to pay for it, and I hope you will ask him tough and difficult questions uh, for him to, to be able to give answer. But the next reason why I'm uh, uh, optimistic about the future of the CTBT is the youth. And then you have uh, a young, talented expert from the DPRK. Uh, you're giving us an opportunity to share the stage. And then he is now, uh, he will share the wisdom of uh, those who have been in this field for so long and is giving us hope. Hope because I believe in the youth, and I'm not the only one. But at least uh, you've seen some talented CTBT youth group members today. I think Asia was uh, kind of uh, assisting you as master of ceremony. More than that. More than that, you said. Research associate. Research associate. And then you have Sarah from Monterey. And then others who are now at, um, at MEFI. 100 CTBT youth group members who are talking about the future of the CTBT and how best they can help. And I'm optimistic because those young people make the impossible possible. Uh, why? Because young people don't have the burden of the difficulties of the negotiation and people who didn't agree or agree to disagree. And then they come fresh with fresh ideas. And then for those who think the CTBT is impossible, the youth group members will make it possible because they'll gather young, talented, fresh ideas to get this treaty moving and then making it a reality. And I'm optimistic as well about the CTBT because, uh, of course, when I come to Russia, I can't lose any single space of optimism because I'm coming to a country where at the highest level, They've shown and reaffirmed their commitment to this treaty, even at the time when there were doubts that Russia may pull out and start testing. You've heard it from Foreign Minister Lavrov today. I heard it from President Putin yesterday at Valdai. But I'm more optimistic about the future of CTBT, not only CTBT, non-proliferation and disarmament, because yesterday uh, President Putin said the following. To, to answering to a, a question, he said, look, 
Is disarmament possible? He said, yes. Is Russia committed to disarmament? He said, yes. Russia is committed to disarmament, and Russia is committed to the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty, including the START Treaty as well. That's what he said yesterday. And when you hear this, I think the moderator were talking about positive notes. At this time where things seem you know, darker and darker. But what brings my optimism is because not only listening to them, what I see when I say there's no other alternative, many people often ask me, what do you think about the Ban Treaty? Of course, the Ban Treaty strives to achieve what we're all dreaming for, a world free of nuclear weapons. But this is how we can be determined to achieve a goal that is noble to all of us. But the ways to achieve that goal are where we differ. But one thing that brings us all together is because we know, for instance, that the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty is long due. And we know, as Dr. Blix was telling me again a couple of days ago, that this is the simplest step that we can take to make progress in non-proliferation and disarmament. And this is why I'm optimistic about the CTBT. So now, if I take those sources of optimism to what we've achieved for the past 20 years at the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty, technically and politically. Technically, today, no one has doubt about the ability of the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty's verification regime in the build-up and the international monitoring system to give you and give the international community with trustworthy and credible data that you can use to make your own mind with regard to events that happen on this planet. And I'm not talking only about nuclear test explosion. When there is an event, the high representative for disarmament was asking me, what about this little earthquake or little quake or event that happened a couple of weeks ago? People go to the CTBT today to ask for credible information. So that means that if the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty and its international monitoring system didn't exist, we would have had to create it. And that's why we have to be optimistic about this treaty and optimistic about its verification regime in the makeup. So I won't go into detail about what we've achieved technically. Let me go to the political realm. 183 countries have gathered to say no and never to the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty, with the 166 that I've ratified. I often say, when I say this, you know, I get some heat in my nails. Why do you say that eight remaining countries hold Esther, hostage the treaty? But that's a fact. Because without those eight remaining countries, we can't get this treaty into force. And this is why yesterday at the Valdai Forum, I asked President Putin, because many people before me were asking the question and talking about his leadership. And I said to President Putin, with the leadership that they're talking about and with the commitment that you've shown and expressed about the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty, how about you sharing this leadership among the P5 so that we get this treaty unlocked from the position it is today and for the past 20 years? He had a straight answer that was short. We believe in the CTBT will help you achieve its entry into force. It was probably the shortest answer for, to all the questions that were asked yesterday. And this is why I'm optimistic as well. So politically, when people say, but the U.S. will never ratify, of course the U.S. will ratify. And why I think the U.S. will ratify? This administration is talking about anything that contributes to U.S. national security, they buy in. So our job is to prove that the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty, its verification regime, contributes to U.S. national security. And this is what we have to do. And why it does? Because no other country can have the technical means to look for events in the search for nuclear test explosion than the CTBT and its international monitoring system. We complement the national technical means of every single country, including the big ones. We work closely with them. Right now, sitting, I just got an SMS about some detection that we had that we're still searching for to see how relevant they could be to give an indication of isotope that could be related to the DPRK event. And this is what we serve the international community for. 
And this is why we contribute to those who have the means to do monitoring to complement their national technical means. So we have to work in getting things through civil society and congressmen in the U.S. for them to understand that what wasn't possible in 1999 when the CTBT was hardly 10 or 15 percent completed is possible today with 92 percent completion of the international monitoring system. My next point is China. China is today contributing data to the International Data Center and we've certified the first station last year in China in December after 15 years of build-up in the country. And we yet to certify five more this year to bring six stations contributing data to the International Data Center in Vienna. It shows progress. Progress because 10, 15 years ago, the interpretation of the treaty from China's perspective was different. And today they're giving data because they believe in this organization, they believe in this treaty, they believe in the work that we're doing. And that's optimism. So if China and U.S. to a certain extent, because we have to do more work there, and you're all part of it, including the panelists sitting here. When Shazuka tells me, Lasina, you know, if you tell me that U.S. has ratified at 12, at 12 Ohan, China will ratify. So I'm tempted to say, let me try and switch the watch in a way where you feel that they've done it, or do fake news so that you feel they've done it and then you can ratify before them and then we can come. That's the type of thing that comes to my mind. But Shah, I think you have a job for yourself. Uh, you made it difficult. You'll probably help us through this panel to make life easy to all of us. So this is why and where I get my optimism. I can go on and go on and go on. Yesterday in Valdai, we're talking about create, creative destruction. How the current problem can bring solution in our world. And somebody said, mm, the problem is, if you're born, you're committed to die. And I said, no. If you're born, you're not committed to die because you don't choose to come. You know, so you're not committed. And I give you a little story. My uh, middle daughter, when she was 12 years old, because having braces was in, in fashion at her school. And she came and said, eh, Mommy, I want braces because I want to fix my teeth. And then we told her it's expensive because, I mean, you have to wait a little bit because that's not paid by uh, Social Security. And then she went on in her bedroom and then came back and then said, You know, Mommy, you guys have to solve this because I didn't choose to come out with teeth that are not straight. So you've got to fix it because that's your problem. So it's the same thing. Youth haven't choose to have nuclear weapon on this planet. And that's why they don't want that. And Jack Ma, the CEO of Alibaba, said yesterday, the problem with youth is not us. The, their problem is what we, the decision that we make for them. So we shouldn't make decisions for them. We should help them to make their own decision and then prepare their own future. So we should stop making life difficult for young people and then we should bring them solutions or help them to find solution to the problem they find, rather than putting in front of them problem that we've created for so long and hoping that we can solve it for them. So I will hand here and probably, you know, rely on the question uh, because I can talk about my optimism on the CTVT more than more than more and more and more and more. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank Dr. Zerbo, for your optimism for your investments to the new generation. And we know how active uh, preparatory uh, commission of CTBTO uh, to uh, engage new generation in the work you are doing. Uh, 